most of the time without even noticing it. You feel healthy. All the incredibly complex systems that control your body are automatically working. Your ability to breathe and eat, to think, your ability to feel, touch, smell, hear, and see. Even your ability to move around, all are controlled by these systems. Basically, they're electrochemical systems. When an accident causes injury to your body or a disease strikes, one or more of these systems may need help. One of the main ways we know how to help is by giving the body drugs and medicines. We use drugs and medicines to help identify illnesses and to prevent, treat, and cure them. Normally, your skin stops many germs from getting into your body. When it's broken, germs can enter, and the body needs help. Chemical help. Antiseptics are medicines we put on the body's surface to kill the germs there and to keep them from entering. To kill disease-causing germs that have already gotten inside the body, we use another group of medicines. For instance, antibiotics, the wonder drugs, drugs like penicillin and streptomycin, which have been specially prepared to kill germs inside the body without harming cells or tissues. Another kind of drug, antigen preparations, also kill germs inside the body, but in a different way. One example, polio vaccine, contains polio antigens, chemically treated polio germs. Once injected into you, the polio antigens force your body to produce certain substances that kill the polio virus. These substances remain in your body and keep you immune to the disease. Each system in your body requires certain chemicals. The pancreas is a gland which produces insulin needed by the digestive system. Some people can't produce or release enough insulin of their own. Insufficient insulin causes the disease known as diabetes. Fortunately today, we can produce insulin in drug form. Injected regularly into the body, insulin in drug form makes up for the insufficient insulin produced and released by the pancreas of the diabetic. Like a great many drugs, it requires a doctor's prescription. Too much in the body can kill, and so can too little. Diabetics who once might have died are able to lead normal, active lives now that insulin in drug form is available to them. Besides these drugs we've developed to supplement the body chemicals that some people can't produce naturally, we have other drugs that slow down the production of certain body chemicals. People with hay fever start producing too many chemicals called histamines. The nose inflames, the eyes water, the whole head feels stuffed. Antihistamines, when taken into the body, overcome the effects of too much histamine for the respiratory system, and the symptoms are reduced. We have also developed many drugs which affect your central nervous system. This is your body's communications network run by chemicals.
aspirin relieves minor pain and reduces fever by affecting the most important part of your nervous system, your brain. Because it makes certain changes in the chemistry of the brain, it should be used with caution. Another drug which affects the nervous system is Novocaine, which may be familiar to some of you through its use as an anesthetic to relieve pain in dental work. In order for you to feel pain, that communications network, your nervous system, has to send a message to your brain saying it hurts. Novocaine prevents the message by deadening the nerve impulses where the pain is, and your brain doesn't know it's hurting. The area feels frozen. When pain is prevented in just one area of the body, the drug used is called a local anesthetic. To prevent the feeling of pain over a much larger area, sometimes a spinal anesthetic is given. This prevents nerve impulses from going up the spinal cord to the brain. Sometimes a drug is needed that prevents the feeling of pain everywhere in the body. Such drugs, called general anesthetics, directly affect the brain and produce unconsciousness. Recently, we have developed many drugs which alter the chemistry of the brain, sometimes altering the way we see, act, and think. Some, the stimulants, speed up brain activity. Others, the depressants, slow it down. Both kinds of drugs, stimulants and depressants, act on the brain. They should be taken only under medical supervision, and even then, only in the exact dosage prescribed. Although some of these drugs are new, we know conclusively that both stimulants and depressants, if misused, can be and are extremely dangerous. All drugs and medicines have been developed over the years to help us back to good health when an illness or injury makes it impossible for the natural chemicals of our body to fight disease. Illnesses affect different people in different ways, and so do drugs. Their safe use depends upon the right amount of the right drug for each individual person. And that's particularly true for drugs that act on the central nervous system. The discovery and development of new drugs continue. Recently, scientists have produced drugs to treat some kinds of cancer, epilepsy, high blood pressure, and many mental illnesses. These drugs and the many others on the market today are mass-produced under the most exacting scientific conditions in order that they will be available to safely and effectively help the people who need them. Most of us go through life without needing any more than a few of the drugs and medicines available to us. But when we do need them, we are fortunate to have them there to help us.